Hey everybody, I'm Chef Tom with ATBBQ.com and this is Smoked Boneless Leg of Lamb. Well today we're gonna be smoking up some lamb in preparation for Easter dinner. We're starting with a bone-in shank off leg of lamb, so just that upper section of the leg. We're gonna actually take that bone out so we can butterfly the meat, slather it with a wet rub made out of harissa chili paste and some chipotle coffee rub. We'll roll it back up, truss it, and get it on the grill. So let's get started. So this is our good size six and a half pound chunk of leg of lamb here. Uh, you've actually got, you can see the bone here and you can see the bone up here. So that bone's just gonna run right kind of on that diagonal. And that's where we're gonna slice into this to sort of work around that bone and remove all the meat. Uh, looks like we've got a little bit of a blade attached here and we'll work around that when we get to it. So I'm essentially just going to feel for the bone and we're gonna slice right down to it. And then once we find that bone, we're gonna to start to work our way around it. Now you can actually buy these bone out. You'll probably pay a bit more because the butcher has to do more work to get that bone out. On the other hand, you're paying for this bone right now that you're probably not going to do anything with unless you're going to make a stock with it or something like that. But I do think that it's a good skill to know. Good practice for your knife skills. And really when it comes down to it, once you've done a few of these, there's not a lot to it. You're just looking to get essentially your knife all the way around this bone and free that meat. And it's as simple as just following the contour of the bone. Because at some point you'll be able to get all the way underneath it and follow that right up to the end. And then once you've freed that bone, it's pretty easy to just follow it down to the other side. The only thing that gets tricky with these sometimes is when you've got a little bit extra bone left on, as we do with this one. You can see this bone over here is kind of in the way. So we're gonna have to work around that joint to free that. Find the very edge of that bone. Find out how far it goes. Just come around it. There we go. So there you have your deboned leg of lamb and the bone you took out hopefully with very little meat left behind. Now once you've got that bone out of there, you're just gonna look for any like cartilage left behind. I might even just square this off just because that's gonna be hanging out in the end. And then what we wanna do is we want to butterfly this out so it's essentially all on one level. So we'll start with this smaller side here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kinda follow right along parallel to the board and then when we get to the end, kind of make a diagonal cut so that that flops out on the same level as the rest of this. And then we'll come back to this thicker side and kind of do the same thing. So now essentially when we finally get this thing all slathered up with the seasoning, we can roll it right back up like it was, truss it, and you've still got that shape of the leg of lamb. So now we're gonna go ahead and put together that wet rub that we talked about. So we're gonna start off with a quarter cup of the Cattleman's Grill Smoky Chipotle coffee steak rub. So as you can see, plenty of coffee in here, some turbinado sugar, chipotle powder, just a little bit of salt. And we're gonna add to that two tablespoons of our harissa paste. So nice chili base to this harissa paste. It's kind of a fortified version of what we're gonna be building here with the additional flavors of the coffee and now some lemon juice. So we want about two tablespoons of lemon juice as well. And then we're gonna to add to that a couple tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil. As we know, fat really carries flavor as it coats your mouth. So this is always a great way to really 
allow those flavors to travel through your mouth and to taste all of those even better. And then last, we're going to add about a tablespoon of grated garlic. So then we're just gonna mix all of this up into a paste, and this will be the wet rub for our leg of lamb. Ooh, yeah. It's pretty intense just by itself. So much flavor in there. Picking up on the coffee. Got the chili heat from the harissa. Some of those like Tunisian spices, Middle Eastern spices that you get in that paste as well. The brightness from the lemon juice for sure. Just a little bit of sweetness. That's gonna be a really nice earthy flavor profile for our lamb. All right, so back to our leg now. I'm gonna start by getting a little bit of this paste on the outside. I'm just gonna rub that into all these little nooks and crannies. And we'll touch this up after we get it trussed so we don't have to go nuts right now. Just get a base layer going. I'll flip it back over. If you want to, you can actually put some scores in here for that rub to kinda creep down into. And then we are just gonna get this thing seasoned up with our wet rub. Get all the way down in there. And I'm gonna leave just a little bit behind in the bowl for the outside, but otherwise we are good. So now we're just gonna roll this thing back up We're going to start to get this trust. We want to be able to hold this together. So we're going to use a little bit of kitchen twine here. So you can do this in all one shot with one piece of string, but honestly, for most of us, it's just going to be easier to tie one string at a time. So we'll go through that today. We're going to give it three twists up top so that it grabs hold and allows you to make that second knot without losing any ground and then just snip off the excess. So I like to work from the center out and that kind of keeps our shape the closest that we want it to that roast form. And we're just spacing these out, you know, every inch or so. We had this great shape going except for this last little chunk here. So honestly, I'm gonna cut that off. We're just gonna roast it up for a little chef snack on the side. So we'll go ahead and add the remaining wet rub and just spread that across the surface here. This is ready to go on the grill. So today we're gonna be cooking on the Yoder Smokers YS640S pellet grill. We're running it 275 with hickory pellets. And we're just gonna come right up here on the second shelf where we can get lots of smoke circulation, put it kind of near that stack where the color gets really nice, close it up and let it smoke. Go ahead and place a probe right in the deepest part of that leg to give us an accurate reading. All right, it's been exactly three hours since we put our lamb on, you can see that the internal temperature is reading 138 now. We're shooting for 135 to 40, so we're ready to pull this off. Pit's just been holding steady at 275. So well, this is looking really nice. Uh, great reddish brown bark on the outside. Obviously super juicy, dropping juice sitting here on the grate. So let's go ahead and pull this off and let it rest. Well, our roast has been resting for about 20 minutes now. Enough time to really just allow all those juices to redistribute all the way to the ends of the meat so that every single slice of this cut should be nice and juicy. We'll start by just popping off our strings here. Now let's slice right into the middle of this thing and have a look. go. 
Boy, look at all that juice in there. Just waiting to come out. Smells great. Now you can cut these as thick or thin as you like. I kind of like a thinner slice on this. Rather than, you know, cutting steaks out of it. Some of this stuff in the center is just going to be incredibly tender and still super juicy. Love it. Oh yeah. Earthy, for sure. That coffee is great, but the Chipotle is hitting me, getting just a little bit of heat on the tongue. There's just a little bit of tanginess, a little bit of brightness to it. I think that that's coming from obviously the lemon juice, but also within that harissa paste. There's some stuff in there that really brightens it up at the same time while being really like earthy and chilly, all of those great flavors. And then the meat itself is just really tender. That 135 to 140 range, finishing it right in there, I think that's fantastic. It doesn't really have any like pink or anything going on but it's still super tender. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to check out atbbq.com for all the products featured in today's video. If you enjoy the recipe, hit that subscribe button. And if you have any questions or comments or there's anything you'd like to see me cook, let me know in the comment section down below and let's be good to one another. For more recipes, tips, and techniques, head over to atbbq.com slash the sauce. All things barbecue, where barbecue legends are made.